I began in an intuitive way. This writing music was like going into nothing and pulling out a whole song, you know, uh, melody, chords, orchestration, words that mean something, and then you put it all together. It, music is pretty much channeling. And uh, But when I was in high school, we didn't say we were going to the channel or going to have a reading. We just said we we're going to see Mike's mom, and that's who she was, Mike's mom. Uh, she was a magnificent sweetheart of a woman, very kind, Eunice McCoy, and she was a psychic. And her explanation was that she would go into a trance. She literally did not remember what she said to you in the reading. So she would go into this place and she said it was like going into outer space where she was just floating around. And while she was somewhere out there, she said she was letting her body be used by me and like this some higher part of me, some bigger part of me that my little mind can't see most of the time, that this bigger part of me was going to be talking through her back to my little human mind to help give me perspective and guidance. That was what Eunice basically did. And so there weren't angels or dead people or aliens or anybody. It was just sort of a way to get in touch. There were all these questions, for me anyway, plagued with questions, deep, always too deep for everybody's good. Barb, lighten up. So this was a way to connect this bigger part of me that I couldn't wrestle with on the non-physical part of me that had been operating musically for a long time in talk to my human brain. So I studied with Eunice for 10 years. I would go once a year or twice a year. In fact, I just found some of the old notes uh, from my first reading and uh, some of what it said was, you will be traveling the world teaching the power of the I am. Now, I don't know what at 17 I thought that meant, because all I wanted to do was be a rock star. But amazing uh, lessons in this intuitive form of these arts. So we'd have a reading, I would write it down, and then I'd write down what I think it meant, and then I would go live. And I'd pay attention to see what it really meant, how it really played out. And I studied in this way for 10 years and found just amazing, amazing world of non-physical energy of consciousness that if you're not looking for it, you might not see it. But lucky me, I was guided to, to see it that way. And so I learned a lot about my life. At a particular point, probably 1988 or 87, I came in off the road and went into uh, substance abuse treatment. And it was at that time that I started to channel like Eunice. And mine began with automatic writing. I was writing a letter to a friend, telling her how bad it was for her to make judgment. And all of a sudden, it's as if my hands became independent of my thought process and I was watching this thing and there was like some intelligence coming through me at the same time I was watching it going, what is going on? And this beautiful, beautiful message came through to me saying, when you judge things, it closes down your perception of what you can see. And all you see is a little tiny bit. If it's so bad, it's just a little bit. So remove the judgments and open up and the lens will open and you're going to be able to see a bigger picture. Now at the time, about to go into treatment, <laughs> crazy, thinking, who are you? And the answer was sound. We've been working with you all your life. And they went on to talk about my whole life very intimately and framed it in such a compassionate way without excusing it or um, dismissing it, making that experience as bad as it seemed have value and worth and wisdom that 
came from it. And it was the beginning of this most miraculous change in my life. So I wrote for a while. People would come and sit down and I would write. And after about a year, I thought, I, I have to learn to do this like Eunice did. And so I was at a party and everybody's there. I told them, you know, what I just told you. This is how I got here. Do you want to try this experiment? And everybody was game except this one guy was very sarcastic and skeptical. And, and I said to him, look, I don't care if you believe in it or not. Just do me a favor and don't, like, criticize me while I'm doing it because I'm taking a chance here. And I just want to see what happens. Well, that man asked the deepest questions of all. And when I got through, I don't remember what was said. I remember closing my eyes and taking some deep breaths and then getting out of the way, but not like Eunice. You know, Eunice always said she didn't remember a thing. But I kind of got out of the way, but still let this voice come through me. Now, I'm a singer. I've been channeling music my whole life. This is not a stretch of imagination. And in my head, I'm picking up some greater energy, bringing it through to our human minds. I'm not channeling Einstein. I'm not even talking to angels. I'm just like a giant tool that is really articulate. And it was truly amazing and remarkable. And I started doing private readings. I gave two readings to two of my friends and said, if it's valuable to you, pass it on. I charged $25. <laughs> that was in 1987. And that's pretty much where everything has come from. And in the shadow of that meteor, he put my hand on the throttle and then he shoved me through the door. And every second was eternity. And every feeling of every lifetime came a rushing back to me. Little boy, Gene.